Hey there, welcome to the Oklahoma Aquarium. We're really glad to have you with us today. Uh, my name is Ann Money and I'm the Director of Development and Research here at the Aquarium. And now I'm gonna let all of my uh, lovely friends here introduce themselves. Tilly, to start with you. Hi, my name is Tilly Holliday and I am the Dive Safety Officer here at the Oklahoma Aquarium. Uh, I've been a diver and dive instructor for the past 25 years now, so it's a quite a great honor to get to take care of all of the divers and the beautiful fish here at the Oklahoma Aquarium. So that is what I get to do. And you haven't lost anybody yet. No, so I haven't. You're doing I a haven't. good job. It's too much paperwork. It's too much paperwork. That's because I don't dive anymore. That's because Kenny doesn't <laughs> dive anymore. I'm Kenny Alexopoulos. I'm the chief operating officer at the Oklahoma Aquarium. And uh, this is my close team amongst uh, quite a few others that I wish could join us today. but. Um, and then I'm gonna pass it over to John over here. And my name's John Money. Uh, I am the deputy director here at the Oklahoma Aquarium. I'm a marine biologist by schooling, and uh, I sort of fell into the aquarium industry, and uh, I'm really glad that I did, and it's been a, a great time. I've been hanging around this group for 30 years and can't seem to shake them, so it's- <laughs> He's giving me dirty looks. I'm not sure how great of a time it was, but all right, thank you. Yeah. All right, so uh, right now we're going to tell everybody how old we are, um, or real old. We're going to talk about how long we've been here and where it all started. So we, the three of us met in Seattle many, many years ago. We were very, very young. I'm just kidding. We were already adults then. But we were working in Alaska on fishing boats, and I'm going to let you kind of take it from there and talk about that. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm a marine, marine biologist by schooling, and uh, my dream was to uh, study marine biology, do research, work near the ocean. The, the, the thought was, you'll never make money as a marine biologist, but I figured I'll be poor on the beach. Uh, so here I am, <laughs> landlocked in Oklahoma, living in Tulsa. So obviously I've made some horrible decisions in my life. Uh, but uh, when I got out of school, I, I, I ran off to Alaska to work on fishing boats, and uh, uh, I met some great people up there that obviously we've, we've had some, some long relationships. Kenny, I actually knew in school, so we went to school together. Um, Texas A&M. Texas A&M Galveston, Galveston, yeah. We are sea Aggies. Yes, absolutely. Gigum yeah. sea Aggies. <laughs> so uh, it was, when we yeah. went there, I think there was what, about 400 students. Yeah. S small school on Galveston Island. And uh, again, the promise was, uh, uh, you know, to live near the beach. And so went off to Alaska, started working there on fishing boats. And... Uh, through a, a chain of events, uh, we had the opportunity to, to get into the aquarium industry. And while we were in Seattle, I met Ann, and uh, so as I say, the rest is history. <laughs> well, be before that, though, he came back, and uh, oh yeah, and, yeah, and because I'm such a scholar, you know, it took me like six or seven years to get through school to college. <laughs> so he left me behind, hey, you're all and then good. Uh, yeah, then he came back, and uh, I had a girlfriend at the time I was living with, and so. Uh, she kind of conveniently moved out right when he came back into town. So, uh, and we kind of knew each other a little bit, but not super well, but uh, he needed a place to crash. So John moved in with me. And I think the last thing he remembers was the house full of really nice furniture and all kinds of good stuff. And uh, so he thought that's what he was going to be moving into. And then yeah, she took the everything. Girlfriend took yeah. She took everything. <laughs> so when I moved in, it was like an old 70s couch that his parents took out of storage and like a horsehair rug <laughs> mounted on the wall. And, and I remember a VCR that, that top loaded that had a remote with a cord. So okay, come on impressive. now. We're not nice. that old. Nice. Anyway, <laughs> nice. No, it was old. that was old then. We yeah. came back from Alaska and then settled back in Galveston. And so... It, John and I had a house on the canal in Galveston. It was, it, was, it was a lot of fun. And we actually hadn't talked to Kenny in, it had been a year or so. I was selling mobile homes at most, really marine, most marine biologists, yeah. uh, kind of settling those of, kind of part jobs. Of, yeah. part of the yeah. path, right? Yeah. So Kenny comes down to Galveston one day and he goes, okay, guys, I've got this opportunity. He said they're opening an aquarium called Moody Gar uh, at Moody Gardens here in Galveston. I really, I really want to get into that field. And he said, well, there's a, there's a job. And the, the job was hatching penguins overnight for $6 an hour. And I'm going, okay, you should probably come and live with us for 
<laughs> rent free for a while. And definitely the rest is history after that, because from, from hatching penguins, you went to? To fish. <laughs> <laughs> right? So okay. yeah, it wasn't as glamorous Why as Why did sounded. you walk away from penguins? Well, you know, they don't smell very well. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Fish are less now, stinky. Just to clarify, he wasn't sitting on the eggs to hatch them. He was, <laughs> I, I was, was rubbing them a lot. Yeah. I, think, I think he was. <laughs> So yeah, actually, it, yeah, I was basically a glorified janitor. So uh, we uh, they collected these penguin eggs from South Georgia Island, and uh, there was about 50 of them. And so they were in these 100-year-old incubators in a USDA quarantine, and uh, you had to shower to go in, and anything you brought in had to stay there until, for the length of the quarantine, and then you had to shower and come back out. So uh, my job at the time was to work nights so all night long doing nothing but cleaning after everybody <laughs> and their boots and everything until and then writing down stuff about the penguin temperatures and whatnot and then when they hatched of course i was cleaning after biologist and penguins so yeah it was a lot of fun but then they had an opening for uh, that's when they got the uh the first animal holding for the fish and that's really kind of my thing and john's thing and so uh i i got in on that and did pretty well. Yeah, at yeah. the time, I think I was still in Alaska, so I was yeah. working uh, for the International Pacific Halibut Commission. I was doing long line surveys for halibut. He was doing cool stuff. And I was, <laughs> the contracts were like 90 days on, 90 days off. Literally. Off. And so then I, I ruined would, his I life. would go up and fish in Alaska for 90 days for work, and then I would come home and fish in Galveston for fun for 90 days. And in one of those 90 day breaks, Kenny said, you know, there's an opening, and you ought to come in and talk to him. And I thought, well, if I hate this aquarium thing, I'll be back up to Alaska in 90 days, you know, and I never went back. So it's been aquariums ever since. So we went from catching fish and processing them to, uh, to keeping them alive in tanks like this. And it, it's a, it was a good move. Um, so John and I had no idea what, how, to, how to run an aquarium, really. We we're kind of faking it. You learned, <laughs> so, full, on, yeah. full on faking it. But, it was, uh, everything's easy if you don't know what you're we were, talking about. We, somehow we were, yeah, somehow we were, we, we were better than everybody around us because we ended up getting promoted somehow. I don't know what they were thinking, but um, so we were kind of running the show as far as, uh, you know, the animal collection for as far as fish and that kind of thing and sharks. And uh, it was kind of a trial by uh, fire. And um, we uh, we had a, a lot of things we didn't know. And, there, and the aquarium itself really uh, wasn't complete, even though it was kind of complete, but it really wasn't. And there was a lot of problems, a lot it's of problems in the aquarium. Baby. Yeah, I always think yeah. of it as a turnkey thing. It was it was built by people who didn't run aquariums, and they handed the biologists the keys and said, here it is. And as a result, a lot of things didn't work. And, and, it, that's, and it wasn't because of a lack of money. No, no, they spent was, a lot of money on this aquarium, yeah. and uh, there were things lacking. And, and I think we saw the opportunity when, the, mm -hmm. when it came to come to Oklahoma to do it differently, to come yeah. early, to design the aquarium, to be involved in right. building it. Uh, you know, I want a floor drain here. I want to yeah. chill there. Well, you guys there. did it so well. I mean, you really learned how to run an aquarium there. And you did it so well that the then director of Moody Gardens asked you to come up and open yeah. this aquarium in, in outside of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and so prior to us coming here, though, but like John was saying, is that uh, we learned a lot because things weren't working. So we did a lot of fixing of things and... Um, there wasn't a real uh, tight schedule, but one of the things I remember is with, with John is we, we were getting king crabs one time, and uh, we didn't have a system for king crabs, and we didn't have a chiller for king crabs, but they were on their way. And uh, of course, we like to eat king crabs, but oh, we're, hungry, in this case, we we're trying to keep them alive. And so uh, John and I were trying to figure out how we're going to keep these things alive without a chiller, because they need like 50 to 45, 50 degree water, something like that. So John and I decided that uh, there was a walk-in freezer that was working. So we built an entire filtration system in this walk-in fr walk freezer. And uh, we were freezing our butts off, putting this thing together. And uh, when, the, when the crabs arrived, they got, they put it, you know, we put it yeah. in, in the tank. So when you walked into this freezer, the whole thing was fish tanks. Yeah. So it was yeah. kind of, you know, you got to, you kind of got to improvise. But anyhow, that kind I of, digress. That kind of segues, though, yeah. into what you had to do when you came here. Yeah. And this was, yeah, so Kenny talked us into moving to the middle of the country as well. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah we were talked into a lot of things over the course of this career. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, absolutely. So when I, ca I came here, and I, I was the first one to kind of test the waters, and uh, uh, Jinx wasn't really what it is now back then. This was June of 2000. Mm -hmm. 
And so there was a Jinx Feed and Tack store uh, right there on the uh, off Main Street, and um, the budget otherwise known as our tank supplier yeah, at the time. Yeah, <laughs> our budget was almost non-existent. So yeah. that's why we came really because we could got to build this place. They needed us honestly because the budget wasn't there to have it built by companies. So we had to. Uh, figure out a way to cheaply build this aquarium by hand and uh, and thank God that uh, these guys came um, you know up here because there's no way I would have been uh, sunk so uh, I remember our office was an old train depot which is no longer there it's like a hundred year old train depot that's cool right? and yeah, yeah and, and so cool. uh, I, w I knew we didn't have much money so uh, we were going to our, our first task was to build this uh, quarantine facility in an old machine shop downtown Jinx. And uh, so for tanks, we, I went to Jinx Feed and Tack. First of all, I got the tools from a pawn shop and because uh, that was our budget. So I got pawn shop <laughs> tools and then uh, I got a hog trough and I figured we could make a fish tank out of it by putting glass in it. So I had this hog trough outside under a shade tree and I was putting windows in these hog troughs. And then we got that machine shop and went in there and it was dormant for 10 years. So, so it was piled high with old trash and hospital beds and rolls of carpet. And uh, we kind of rolled up our sleeves and got to work and uh, cleared it out. I remember when we turned the water on, water was pouring out of the walls. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was, it was a good time. And so that's how we kind of started. So yeah. you can imagine our shock when we got here. Yeah, we went, we went <laughs> from uh, living on an island. Uh, and a, I think that we were in a 12-story glass pyramid, yep. $67 million aquarium. In not, that's not where we live, but yeah. No, no, that's, that's where we were. <laughs> I lived on a beach house, you yeah. know, on a canal. in Jamaica yeah. Beach. Mm -hmm. So it, was, yeah. it was, wasn't horrible. And, uh, and then we were in this old machine shop. And uh, I think you rolled up the door and, and birds flew yeah. out. And I said, what, what are we doing? Yeah, pigeons <laughs> and starlings. <laughs> that's all right. Yeah, it was pretty incredible. Yeah. It was a big, it was a culture shock for sure. But, but again... Uh, uh, the, the things we learned those first years, yeah. I mean. And the first fish we got, by the way, uh, we already had a casualty. First fish we got, believe it or not, were some piranhas. And uh, I remember Jeff, who was one of our, our guys at the time that moved up here with us, uh, we just got those piranhas and uh, he was catching them out with a net. And, and uh, I don't know what he was thinking because, uh, you know, piranhas have very sharp teeth. <laughs> yeah, I've heard this. I've heard this. <laughs> and so uh, it buzzed right through the net. Yeah. And then he reached down as if he was going to pick it up. And then this thing jumped up and bit the tip of his finger off. That was, so that was our first uh, fish. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we really looked, uh, we really looked professional at that time. <laughs> we were a little worried. We've come a long way. We've yeah. come a really long way. Absolutely. So we're going into our 20th year now, which is insane to think about. Mm -hmm. And over the course of these years, I mean, we've had amazing people come and go and We've always thought of this place as uh, it's either it becomes your home forever and you can never leave ever, or it's a great stepping stone for a future career in biology. It's, it's the only place in the region where you can work with fish, you can get in the water and dive. And um, actually one of our first dive safety officers, Mitch, um, you knew him when you were, you were young. Yeah, you were he like, helped me through my dive master class. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was my instructor for my dive master class. I have pictures of me and Mitch from 20 years ago down at the lake, him helping me get down into the lake. So, yeah. That's great. And now you're doing And I'm job. doing what he's doing. And you so. do it very well. And I like it. Yeah. So and you'll I have like to it. kill me to get me out of it. I'm That's, sorry. Yeah, no, I hear you. I'm sorry. I hear you. Yeah. Well, Stuck we're going to have you dive with the sharks next week. Okay, so. that's <laughs> fine. That's <laughs> fine. I'll go do it. It's fine. So Tilly, I'm not scared yeah. of them. Tilly's our dive safety officer, but she's just she doesn't stop with diving, so she's just kind of our safety officer. So <laughs> right. We keep her around because she makes us laugh a lot. Well, we're so. accident prone too, so yeah. that's why. No, 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 no. He's accident prone, and he's accident prone. <laughs> yeah, and tries to stay in the safe that's a, areas. And that's another story. Yeah, that's a, that's a yeah. story. We do not have time for those stories today. Oh, for so long. <laughs> what I love is that not only do you take care of the animals, you make sure that the tanks always look beautiful, you keep the divers organized, but you also train all of our new biologists if they huh? aren't scuba certified yet. And... You scuba certified our son. I did. At 12. Life. Yep. Yes, he did. Yeah. He did a great job. He did. Exactly. <laughs> he was like a little fish. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. So any, if I could give any advice to any virgining marine biologists out there, I highly recommend you get certified. Just do it. I mean, you're going to. 
at the end of the tank get certified. at some point in the water, and that's where the things you're studying are. Um, but the other great thing about this place is that a lot of our team, our cleaning team, are volunteers. Yeah. And that's the coolest thing about it is that we have such a passionate, like you say, in the middle of Oklahoma, in the middle of nowhere, where we're 12 yeah. hours from even a dirty ocean, right? Right, right, right? You still have to get on a boat and go another two hours to find clean water to, to, to dive, dive yeah. in, right? Uh, I have people, I had eight divers here today to clean tanks. That's so, awesome. you know, bubbles. it's it's great for them because like you say, there's no beach here. There's no pretty water here. We have the lakes, which are just as fun to dive in, but a lot of people don't like just diving where you can yeah. only see one foot. No. And if you can dive with an endangered animal at the same time that you're volunteering, that's the best volunteer job in the world, really. It is. <laughs> So, they, yeah, the fish very pull honored. Your hair. Oh, they do. I have all these little short hairs on the front of my head just for that reason. Yeah. They come by and they just, they just. It's such a win-win for us because I feel like, you know, we've had couples here who say, I got certified to dive mm -hmm. on my honeymoon and we haven't dove in four years. And exactly. now we dive every week or every two yeah. weeks at the aquarium. Yep. And then for us, it's a great thing because they, they scrub the rocks, they feed some of the fish, they interact with the public, the kids. Mm -hmm. It's. It's just such a win-win. It's a great program. So anyone who's dive certified that doesn't know about it mm -hmm. should should think about getting in the tanks. They definitely and should. Out. Well, you know, about 20 years ago, if we get, if we rewind, we didn't have a dive safety officer. <laughs> we didn't. Yeah. We weren't very safe at the time. We and had more. and uh, we had more. I remember when we got really? our our first bull sharks. Yeah. yeah Mark wasn't very safe. <laughs> um, we when we got our first bull sharks, they were actually from SeaWorld. Um, they were they were an older collection, and uh, bull sharks like to eat everything. They like to eat their tank mates. So um, I think SeaWorld had enough of that. And so, um, but because we didn't have any money and we were crazy, we ended up saying, "Yeah, we'll take them." Sure, we'll sharks. take it. So, Sounds yeah. awesome. And, and sharks like that, uh, bull sharks don't transfer transport very well. Believe it or not, they're they're pretty delicate. So um, we uh, were part of a team, John and I, and, and our crew. Um, and a couple other, uh, and SeaWorld staff and, and another staff from uh, Dynasty Marine, and we all uh, transported those sharks in the back of semi trucks. You and know we'll what, get though? into that a little bit later. I was going to say, that's a great segue but, to tell uh, people to yeah. come back and join us again. But uh, when we, you know, so that's how we got our bull sharks. And uh, in the beginning, you know, we didn't have dive safety officer, we didn't, have, we didn't even use chain mail. Yeah. John and I would dive, and, no, and, you know, we hired a lot of these people from Oklahoma. And live and you learn. Turn, yeah, we turned marine biologists Thank God we out lived. of them. <laughs> and so we were just diving with our wetsuits. Yeah, uh, we have you know. all our fingers and toes. Yeah. I was about to say, everybody still has their legs yeah. and arms, we promise. We're Absolutely. good. We're good. So we got those sharks in our first in our first quarantine that we built, um, not, not the machine shop, but the first building on site was a 10,000 square foot quarantine facility and it's still here what's left of it and uh, <laughs> and so um when we actually and during that time so that's when we got those bull sharks uh but during that time we started uh we were about to move into the actual facility to build the aquarium and uh when we moved in it was just black painted plywood walls and so everything had to be done by hand so all the filtration all the fake rocks and fake corals and all those things and the walls everything we had to build um, just the team and uh, you know, so that's how we saved millions of dollars because there's no way uh, that this aquarium could have been open. It was right. it's about a $35 million project and I think we came in right at 20 million. 20, yeah, yeah. 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 So that's and we couldn't do it without without our volunteers. We couldn't do it without our volunteer support. We still us. have and some of those volunteers we here do. today. Still, some of the the volunteers that started with us like mm -hmm. almost day one, mm -hmm. and their family now, their yeah. family. Yeah. So how fun is that to go through the history of kind of day one of how we got here and starting with that <laughs> that warehouse where everything had to be pulled out and we're building our own uh, platforms and using feed troughs and all that. But we've gone from that to this world-class facility, 90,000 square foot aquarium with about 100 exhibits, over a million gallons of salt water. We have the world's premier collection of bull sharks and some of the clearest water you will see in any aquarium in the world. And people come from all over the world to see our exhibits, to see how we do it, to see the filtration that you guys designed, to see how clean our tanks always are. Uh, we have taken what was this little 
place and made it into something that I would put up against any aquarium in the entire world. And we're not done yet. And we're not yeah. done yet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we build new exhibits every couple years. We just got started now. Right? We just proved ourselves yeah. now. Now, right. we, now the real work starts. I'm right. so proud of some of the tanks like the reef here that have been renovated in the last few years. And they're, they're so much more spectacular. But yeah. I'm also really proud of these tanks that we built 20 years ago yep. that are still out there that still hold their own. Mm -hmm. And they still yeah. hold their own. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, we didn't know then what we know now, but but I think we did a pretty good uh, job of, of getting Agreed. this place off I the ground. I would say so. And it's yeah. just getting better and better every year. I'm more and more proud of it. Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. Totally. Well, thanks for joining our podcast today. This was a great conversation. I really appreciate it, you guys. And I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope that you will chime in again for our next Oklahoma Aquarium podcast. Mm -hmm.